We're back with more of the WHHI News. Joining me now, 14th Circuit Solicitor Duffy Stone and also Attorney Stephen Gursky. You are doing something known as a mock trial. For, yep. You've done it this week. You're doing it next week. What is it? We've done it, and we've done it for the last uh, five or six years. What it is is it's sort of we have our new lawyers that come in. Uh, this is the end of their training period, and it's a mock trial, an opportunity for them to, to try a case we bring in volunteers to um, to serve as jurors uh, as well as judges and things like that. Uh, and the the other thing about it is we also take all of our lawyers that have been with us for less than three years and put them in the competition too. So we have new lawyers, brand That's new great. lawyers. We have lawyers that have been really there for a way a to hone years. their skills. Well, it's also an opportunity for me to see all of the lawyers in our office in one setting right. with a controlled case, uh, mm -hmm. and it, it it teaches them not only how to present a case but also how to analyze some pretty complex facts. Cool. All right, Stephen, you're an attorney. You're doing this. You're with Duffy's office. Uh, what's it like? Well, um, it's, a, it's a great process. Um, we have several experienced prosecutors in our office, and they're not only experienced, they're experienced in trial. So we're fortunate to receive direct feedback from That's people. gotta help, right? Absolutely. Because you don't normally get that, say, for the volunteers that are your jury members. By the time this is all done, you're gonna hear what they thought you did well and not so well, which can hurt a little bit, but but it's helpful. It helps you improve. I need to back up a second and ask you, what case are you doing right now So this the mock is, trial? This is State versus Gail Coutreau, uh, which was tried in the 90s, um, and really it, it begins in 1993. And this is a case where um, this was a daycare facility and two children were lost in that home and another was severely injured. Uh, okay, I mean, that sounds pretty intense. Do you have to study up before you start doing your work in front of that jury and the judge? Absolutely, it's an arduous process. We have to be extremely thorough and it takes a lot of time and a lot of hard work. Do, well, you know the outcome, what actually happened. Do you ever get in a mock trial an outcome different than what happened in the actual court? Yeah, and the, and the thing about this case was what was what sort of drew me to pick the Kutro case. I knew about it. I, I was in that office, in the solicitor's office in Columbia that prosecuted it, but I had left prior to them trying it. But what's interesting on that case is they tried it three different times over a four-year period, and it came out with different verdicts each time. So this, was, this works really well Crazy. for that yeah. because it, it forces the lawyers to think through what is the best approach to present this case? Uh, and, and I think Stephen hit something that was really important. There's a lot of work underlying a case. And when you're a trial, when you're prosecuting a case in a courtroom, it's not just looking good and sounding good. You've that got to know hurt, the facts. That doesn't hurt, but I know what you're no, saying. But you, you do, you've you got do. to know the facts, and you've got to be able to analyze the best way to present those facts. And, and that's what drew me to this particular case. That sounds great. Do you get nervous, Stephen? Be honest now. Is it a little nerve-wracking? I mean, you're among people that have a lot of experience, your peers, and even people from the community as, as jurors. Do you get a little nervous? I do get nervous, but that's a part of the process. And the more you prepare, the less nervous you're going to be. So... Um, that's really my mind frame is I'm going to be as prepared as possible so that I don't have to be nervous. Is most of what you say or ask during a trial, at least in this instance, pre-thought out and pre-scripted? Do you ever do things off the cuff in reaction to what maybe the defense says? As a prosecutor, you have to be able to do things off the cuff. You have to be able to think quickly on your feet. Um, but oftentimes, yes, I know what I want to present and I know what I'm looking for out of my witnesses. And I'll ask, well, I'll ask you this, Duffy. Can you read a jury? Can you read their faces? Do you even you, try? Yeah, well, I, I, not in the context of saying, uh, can I look at a jury and say, okay, they're definitely going to come back guilty or they're definitely coming back. I, I can't do that. But I will tell you this. Uh, you pay attention to the jury when you're presenting the case. You can get feedback from the jury that's nonverbal. And so if you're presenting a witness that doesn't make any sense or they're saying something, you've got, in this case in particular, you've got some experts that are forensic pediatric pathologists. And so you've very got some technical. people, very technical. And they've got to do it in late language. That's right. Language. And, if, and if you don't understand it and you can pick up from the jury that, you know, maybe there's a head tilt here or there that gives you the idea that they didn't understand it either. You've got to be aware of that because you've got to then be able to tell that tell that witness, I need you right. to explain follow this up. to me again because I didn't I didn't wow. follow it. It is really important. Well, guess what? We're gonna do another segment with both of you. We're gonna add in one of the volunteer jury folks, Great. see what it's been like for her, and um, we're gonna be back in just a moment. <laughs> 